do you need a Geiger counter? In my opinion, it's a good idea. I've got two here uh, to compare and uh, give you an idea of uh, what I think is a good uh, a good thing to have. Uh, oftentimes, um, when people that know me find out I have a Geiger counter, and actually I have two, but when they find out I have a Geiger counter, they they think it's a little weird and wonder why I have it. And uh, it's uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. History's shown us time and again that uh, when there's a nuclear accident uh, or, you know, many times just in general, uh, governments often fail to uh, provide info and protect the citizens uh, the way that they should. So what I've got here is uh, two. This is a real simple model. The, I believe it's Russian uh, DRSB01, and this is the uh, Ecotest uh, MKS05, uh, often referred to as the Terra P. Uh, which it says right there in the front, the MKS05 is the actual model. This is a decimeter. Um, it's it's on all the time. It's on right now. It's in sleep mode, but it continues to count um, the the number of of hits it gets in its Geiger tube, um, even when the, this display is off. And if the level gets too high, it wakes up and an alarm goes off. And I'll demonstrate that here uh, shortly. It also has a regular reading mode. This is just a counter. Uh, it just you know, it's on and off. When you turn it on, it starts counting uh, the hits. You can hear it. Uh, it's got uh, a little light indicator. This green one's supposed to go off every time it detects a uh, a hit in the tube. And there's a red one here that lets you know, okay, the level's too high. You don't want to spend much time in this area. Um, so it's that's what it is. And I've got a little sample of. Uh, Dumite over here, I believe it is. It's you know uranium ore. It's in plastic to keep the dust from getting around. Uh, the plastic bag's not sealed though, so dust can get out of it. But as long as you don't eat it, uh, you should be okay. Um, we'll give you a little. Hopefully this doesn't go off just sitting right there. I'll give you an example of. So when that red light starts going off, it's telling you, okay, the level's too high on this object or in this area. So this isn't where you want to sleep. Uh, you know, type of thing. This is just a low output, uh, lower level piece. Um, it would go even more nuts if it was a, a better piece of, of uh, ore, I guess. So, but that's that one. This is a, a really good news. Cheap. I think I paid 50 bucks for this a couple years ago on eBay, uh, and it's just handy for you can check objects or, uh, you know, if you're going to go into a mine or someplace that you know the radiation's high, you could keep it on you and just. Uh, keep an ear and an eye on it to make sure you're not getting too much exposure. You know, that's all. You don't get much info from this one. Whereas this one has a digital display and will actually tell you the kind of dose that you're getting. Uh, let's see how long it takes to wake up and we put it next to here. There we go. It wakes up pretty fast and lets you know, hey, the level of radiation is too high here. Uh, you want to get out of here. And it reads in uh, microsieverts per hour there. It's telling you what it's getting. And we'll pull it away. It should settle down here and shut off after a few seconds. I've had a couple. I've had this for uh, about two years, I think. And that's see, that's like the normal background level. Uh, you know, anything below 30, uh, 0 0.30 is considered normal background radiation, relatively safe. It rides around uh, 0 0.09, 0 0.10, 0 0.11 uh, at my house where I keep it. But I've had a couple false alarms a couple different times um, where it's gone off in the middle of the night and goes off for a few seconds and then shuts off. And I guess, you know, if it gets enough hits uh, on the tube, you know, in a, in a certain amount of time within a few seconds or whatever, um, it's, you know, that's when it's supposed to go off. So I guess that's what it's supposed to do. But uh, it could be annoying at, you know, 3 in the morning or 4 in the morning when... Uh, when it just decides to go off and your wife wakes you up and says, you know, what is that? <laughs> Which she's done a couple times now. Um, the, uh, it takes two triple A's. Um, they're supposed to last for 6,000 hours or something like that. Uh, you know, when it's in sleep mode, it, it doesn't use much power. I've had these in here for, I don't know, quite a while and it's still showing. That's the battery indicator, those four notches. Still showing full. This is a little lead guard that goes over the Geiger tube. There you can see the Geiger tube. And this is, uh, this stops the, this little lead shield blocks the beta radiation. Uh, so just the gamma gets through. Um, so if you want to take a beta reading, you pull that off. 
and it exposes the, the Geiger tube there. Um, you know, the beta stuff is, is usually in dust, doesn't travel very far, um, those, those rays, so you, you'd only really want to remove that in a specific situation where you've, you know, you've got some, some radiation present and want to see what, you know, what the total reading you're getting is. So you can see the number go up just sitting next to the, the ore here, and as you get closer, of course, it'll go up. It ups, that number updates like every 10 seconds or something. So I don't want the alarm to go off again, so I'm going to move it away. And here's uh, for size comparison. Here's my Blackberry. Uh, so you get a, an idea of the size of these things. They're both thicker than the Blackberry. And uh, of course this one's more narrow. So this one takes two double A's. Uh, it's supposed to be good for I think 200 hours of use. So it's you know, quite a long time <coughs> when you actually have it on. Um, this one seems to to respond a little quicker as it gets close to something than maybe this one does. Eh, that's pretty quick too, I guess. The alarm's going to go off on me. Um, so there you go. Um, these are I think I paid one hundred and seventy-five dollars, if I remember correct, with all the shipping and taxes and everything. And there was I think it was just shipping actually. I had to get this one from the Ukraine. Uh, and this one I got on eBay, and I, like I said, I think it was 50 bucks. So there you go. Um, is it a good idea to have? Yeah, I think it is. Um, you know, by the same token, I don't know anybody else, you know, that actually has one. I don't know anybody personally who actually has a Geiger counter. So, you know, some people will think it's weird. Who cares? Uh, don't tell them if you don't want to. Uh, uh, the day after a nuclear accident or, or an attack or something like that, it's too late. You won't find one. Uh, they're hard to find locally, you know, in my area anyways, uh, in, in Ohio, um, in the U.S. Uh, you know, if you lived in the Ukraine, you could probably go into the dime store and pick one up. Um, so it's, you know, it could be different in different areas. But uh, if you wait till the day after something happens, it's too late. You're not going to get one uh, in a timely manner. Um, and, you know, if you do find one, there's a good chance that uh, somebody's going to try and gouge you on the price. Uh, so, you know, and I don't sell Geiger counters, but... Uh, something I think uh, everyone should have um, just to protect yourself because if you're going to count on the government to look out for you uh, you know to me you're just taking a big chance there so if you have any questions let me know be happy to help you any way I can have a good one guys oh yeah I wanted to give a little more detail on the uh, on the uh, ego test here which is a really cool little device it's got a clock and an alarm in it uh, which I've never used but you know, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work. Okay, seems to keep keep pretty good time. And uh, there's just the regular uh, count mode. Um, it also keeps track of your dose. Um, that's a dose that's been accumulated over maybe the last year. I can't remember how long it's been since I replaced the batteries or reset that. Uh, you can set the threshold. This threshold button here on the left will let you set the uh, the alarm. Uh, threshold of course uh, which is set at uh, 0.3 micro sievage per hour or um, uh, the thresholds down there at the bottom there it is 0 0.007 uh, millisieverts in a 24-hour period is what the threshold set at uh, or 0.3 micro sieverts per hour so you can adjust those if you set them to zero I think it just it just goes into a live uh, count mode with no alarm set um, and there you go handy little device to have uh, you know I keep it on all the time I keep the batteries in it all the time uh, you know with the two false alarms or three false alarms that I've got in the last two years I don't consider it a big deal now my wife may see different it's you know freaks her out in the middle of the night when the thing goes off what's that alarm uh, she wonders and you know, I've told her a couple times and the next time I'm sure she'll do the same thing what is that so <laughs> that's the deal yeah you know if it's gonna bother you, you may not want to keep it in your bedroom like I do uh, you know keep it in a study or in the kitchen or somewhere else uh, maybe in a windowsill away from your bedroom so then maybe it won't bother you um, but uh, yeah Geiger counter dosimeter good idea to have these things in my opinion um, if you, uh, if you enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to visit my channel and subscribe. Thanks, guys.